I pray quench their thirst. I pray meet them, my Father, in their points of need. And Lord, I pray, my God, as you satisfy us, you shall cause us to break through in the market spaces, oh God. You shall cause us to break through in our families, oh God. You shall cause us to break through in our day-to-day -day lives. In the name of Jesus, put your hands together this morning and celebrate the Lord God of breakthrough because he shall satisfy you this day. He shall build you up this day. He shall fulfill his word this day. There is no one that shall come that will return to him without accomplishing purpose. So call this day. Do as you have promised. Do as you have said. Do as you have instructed. We give you praise on Jesus. There is no God like you.
praise and honor worthy of all adoration would you just take 30 seconds of your own words and give him glory just of your own words of your own words and give him glory goodness of the Lord. He that is and he that was and he that is to come. The I am that I am. The eternal one. The everlasting father. show up in the small instructions like the one I've given you that let's shout unto God. Then you're saying who is this man to tell me to shout on a Sunday morning. The scripture says in Psalm 47 verse 1 clap your hands all ye people and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shall we go ahead and give him praise in this again before I bring the gift of God to us he's not here for long so we're already eating up into his time uh, I need to bring him on but I'm going to try this again because some of you are still doing this you're still doing this and you're watching me you're still doing this money has not even come to your life you've already started treating, treating me like this what will happen when now you have money how will you treat us when you have money? Right now, you're still in some, what is it called? Uh, bed sitter. And you're treating me like that. What will happen when, I want us to give God a shout of praise in this place. Everybody under the sun. Everybody under the sun. Yes, you make it. 
today to have a man whose ministry is called breakthrough <laughs> how can you not break through <laughs> glory be to God such a gift of God he's been with us since Friday and yesterday I, I was writing my notes yesterday I wrote about 32 points I did about 32 points yesterday just doing my notes but Rev Wally Joseph is an apostolic grace. I don't use that lightly. Uh, a pioneer, a groundbreaker, a teacher, a father. How many people remember when uh, Apostle Yogo was here before? You remember Apostle Yogo? Yes. His father is with us today. <laughs> Glory be to God. And he's doing such a great work in Mombasa and across. They've got a church here in Nairobi, Breakthrough Chapel, and in different places. And so we are so excited to have him, a man who has spent so many years in the Word, uh, a first-line son of Bishop David Oyedepo, pedigree in this house. He speaks with simplicity and with softness, but with grace. And we want to unleash him because the people who want him in the next place have even arrived. See how hungry those other guys are. Like we've not even started, they're already here. So we need to draw whatever we need to draw. Please help me receive to the microphone the gift of God. Come on, go ahead. Celebrate the gift of God. Go ahead and receive the gift of God. Let's lift up our hands to heaven, appreciating the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Open your mouth and talk to him. He knows you by your voice. 
express your appreciation to him. Thank him and thank him, thank him for all that he has done in your life. Oh Lord, we bless you. Leko tombre dos kele toriada. Emla su kamare geya kecho lebobosh 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 lebobosh. Engla pa 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 rase tele baboyata. God of signs and wonders. God of all breakthrough. Enchu bredus kele toriada. Thank you and thank you. Thank you for many years of grace. Thank you for what you are doing in this place. Thank you for the life of everyone. Thank you for the life of your servant and his dear wife. Thank you for the various level of leadership. Thank you for many battles you won for them. The one that they are aware of. The one that are not even in their knowing. Thank you and thank you for salvation of soul in this place. Thank you for this ministry and many lives that he has transformed. Father, we gather here today to say thank you. In thanksgiving, you preserve. In thanksgiving, you multiply. In thanksgiving, you make your way known. As we are gathered here today, let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Let the confused find direction. Let the depressed overcome oppression. And let your name and only your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have adored him. And everyone that is a believer, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I like to appreciate God's servant and his dear wife for the privilege I have to be here. It has been quite refreshing and I'm grateful for all other level of leadership, pastor and, uh, and the rest. Thank you for hosting me. It has been a time of refreshing. The Lord bless you. I'm not hearing your amen. I said the Lord bless you. I said the Lord prosper you. I said the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord hold your hand this year and walk you in a path that you have never known. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why I thank you except you didn't come with my own uniform. But all the same, thank you and God bless you. These are wonderful African attires. Be blessed. Thank you. Do you love this choir? Put your hands together. Hallelujah. We have a quick job to do this morning. Please, you may be seated. We have a quick job to do this morning. A very quick job to do. And I will still be speaking on unveiling the mystery of kingdom breakthrough. And that will be part three. Unveiling the mystery of kingdom breakthrough. I would like us to have our text in Haggai chapter 2 and verse number 1 to 9. Haggai chapter 2 and verse number 1 to 9. It says, In the seventh month, on the 21st of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Speak unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shital, governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Josadak, the high priest, and the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now in comparison with, with it 
Is it not in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, say to say the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, the son of Josadad, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and walk, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. The next verse, according to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, take note of that word, according to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. So my spirit remain among you, do not fear. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, once more it is a little while, I will shake heaven and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and they shall come to me, desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory. Says the Lord of hosts, I will fill this temple with glory. The sliver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. And then he said, the glory of this later temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Now, the, my emphasis here is that uh, we'll be saying many things about this scripture we have read, but uh, the bottom line is this. I want us to see what is the plan of God for the end time church. I want us to see it because what you don't see, you cannot possess. Job said, I've heard about you, but now I'm seeing you face to face. I pray for someone here, you will have an encounter with God. Amen. Your amen is very weak. Amen. I will request Mandasi be given to you so that you can say a better amen. amen. Can you say a louder amen? amen? You know everybody has where you shout. <laughs> when you see a Senna fan, they shout. Amen. Amen. Even though you have to have another heart to be a Senna fan. <laughs> because they can be winning and suddenly they turn to the other side. But everybody have where he shout. So I don't know why church of today with all the Holy Ghost we don't shout as we ought to. That's why many people are not winning. A warrior come with a confused noise. You must learn to shout. I will give you an assignment. Once in a while, just stay in your room and shout alone. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. You will just see a spiritual energy will just surge out from somewhere. It's a mystery. You know the meaning of Shabbat? It's a mystery. So don't be a quiet believer. Yeah. Don't be a quiet Believer. Tell your neighbor, don't be a quiet believer. Amen. Tell him we are in sanctuary. Amen. We are not in the mortuary. Amen. So don't practice one. Amen. Amen. So he said, the glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former. The end time church is a church that has a prophetic agenda before it. The Bible talks about it shall be filled with glory. A time is coming, this compound will not continue amen. in parking your car. Amen. And I don't need your email to believe, so you better say it amen. for your own sake because I've been watching this in the last over 30 years. Over 30 years. I, I, when I got saved in uh, 1988, there about, my first job in the church was to count the cars in Winners Chapel in Nigeria. That's my assignment. I go around, I count the car. As a nurse, my department is to count car. You know, you need to be counting this car. I hope we have us who does that. Okay, I will request for that service, service group to be inaugurated today. You just count the car. You know, let me tell you, 
I always tell people, if the principle of God that works for animal does not work for you, you are not a human being. <laughs> Jacob wanted a kind of animal. Right. And he used a stick, a rod, and make a strike on that rod and place it before the animal. And every time they come to drink, they conceive what is placed before them. You understand what I'm saying? If it works for animal, why can't it work for believer? So when you are going out, look at this car, admire them. You see, when I talk to you, you don't have a choice but to have an experience. I'm telling you the truth. You don't have a choice because I'm a combatant soldier. I've served God from nothing to where I am. So there is nothing I'm telling you about God that I need prayer. I only need your faith. Because it will happen. I'm not hearing your amen. I'm not hearing your amen. No, I'm not a pastor without a proof. I'm only a fool without proof. So if I tell you God will bless you, I know exactly what I'm saying. I can tell when Nessa will be here, there will be many cars here. Your amen is so weak. I can tell you. Because when I was counting cars in those days, sometimes we have four. Sometimes we have 15. On Sunday we could have like about maybe a hundred. But today, I think if you are to count car in that church, you can count almost nothing less than 150,000 on a Sunday. If you are to count car in Kenya land, uh, you will count until you are tired. You will count until what? You are tired. When I was there as an associate pastor to God's servant, Bishop Boyedepo, I only drive to church, but I don't drive back home after service. I will drive, will drive to church, drove to the church, attend service. Because if you want to drive back home, you will waste fuel. So what we do, we leave our car there and walk to our apartment. So in the evening, you go and pick your car. <laughs> if you are a wife, and I was using Mercedes, so driving there and then staying in the jam. And for your information, I'm living within the church premises. And you can be on, on that line for an hour, two hours, you have not get out. You are still within. So when I tell you we have a car, I'm not looking at where you are walking. That's your own problem. I'm not looking at where you are. I'm not looking at your bank account. No, I'm looking at the one you are serving. Yeah. Uh, please, I want you to be like children. Eh? I love once in a while to go to supermarket with my children when they were young. At a certain age, you promise them, I will buy you plane. And when they get to, to, to supermarket and find one, they take it. But at another age, they say, no, this one, the one that is flying. Now, he has never wondered whether you yourself have ever entered plane. But he believed that his father can do all things. And that's why the Bible says the kingdom belongs to the children. You are too mature. You can calculate. <laughs> now I'm saying that uh, you will have a car now. Somebody say, my salary is 100,000. When I pay rent, hardly I save 20,000. 20,000 divided by 2 million. So when will I buy the car? I will be around 65. It's a lie of the devil. I've woken up in the morning in Mombasa. Without the car, I went to church with Matatu and by evening, I own a brown new car. Amen. 1997. That, you, can, you can be sure God has improved in his... <laughs> 1997. Woke up in the morning, Bombolulu, and then by evening, I have a, a car. I've woken up in Lagos after breakthrough night at around 9 o'clock I had the radio, the walking talking ringing, and they were looking for me in church. And I went to that church and I was giving Mercedes Benz. 
So when I say, you see, I love, I love mathematics. In mathematics, I don't like English. That's why you find that my English don't follow it. Because <laughs> you might get it wrong. I don't like English. But I love maths. I was a science student. Because maths, the moment they do three examples for you, they tell you, do the exercise. And if you follow the example, you will get the exercise. So I am here as an example. I am here as an example. You see, I'm not here to brag. I'm just here to tell you where God picked me from. And in these last 30 years, I know what God can do. I know him. Somebody is having a car before July in this church. Your amen does not sound like you want one. It doesn't cost God anything. Hey, listen. To you, Prado is a big car. Eh? There is somebody who have it in his house who doesn't need it. Everything you are looking for is available somewhere where it does not require prayer for it to move. I pray this year, whatever you are looking for, the forces of heaven will deliver it to you. So the end time church is not a pitiable church. I, I keep on telling people, Jesus says it's finished. If, if you are caught to what is finished and you are sweating, what of if you are caught to the raw one? <laughs> Jesus says it's finished. It's like I invited you to the house for dinner and I served the food and you are looking for recipe. No, something must be wrong with you. You are called to what was finished. Is somebody hearing me? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I hope you are hearing the pastor. That's why I say, come on, show me all you that labor and a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But when the people came, he said, you are most welcome. He said, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for yourself. The end time church is not a pitiable church. No, the end time church is a glorious church. And when we are talking about church, we are not talking about the building. We are talking about the brethren. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. And what he prophetically declared about the end time church is that it will be glorious. There is no glory in sickness. Come on. I speak to someone that is in any kind of ailment. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is no glory when you are tatteredly dressed. Police is arresting people in Siokimau. They mistake you. And you have to be your, they have to come and bail you. No, no. That's not a glorious church. One boy said he liked the way I walk. You see, when I'm walking, I'm full of confidence. Stop walking and be looking down. Because where you are looking is where you will go faster. That's why I say, lift up your hand, oh ye gate. Walk with your head tall. Jesus has paid the price for all. The end time church is not a pitiable church. It's not a, pit, it's not a church to be scratching his head when they mention money. No. No. I, I was telling that some of us, I was having a single uh, small meeting. I said, it is, it is erroneous for single to be praying for husband. What you should be praying for is grace to make selection. Because all believers outside there who are not born again, seven people hit on them in a day. In a day. And you are in church and every time prayer, God give me. No. Is that you? It's erroneous. Before you were created, there was a husband. Yeah. It's not that you are going, something you are going to look for. You were taken from the rib of a man. Yeah. So the business is making yourself availability. It's making yourself available, making yourself capable of the assignment. 
So you don't need prayer. You only need to go and learn of how to be a wife material. That's all you need to do. Go and learn how to cook pilau in several ways. That's what you need to go and do. And you will go, give me a husband. How will you have arrived here if you don't have a husband? He took a rib from the man and made a wife. So how did you arrive without your partner? It's practically impossible. Listen, spare part of Toyota in plenty in Kenya. How come your partner is not available? How come? I mean, how come? Haria, uh, anything Toyota, you can get the part. Because the manufacturer know when they send the product to. So they have to be aware that there is tear and wear. And they send a spear to Kenya. So how can you be here without the husband? All you need to do is preparation. Because preparation is what is, it, it, uh, is, is preparation that meet with manifestation. You only need to prepare. Oh God, give me a husband. Oh God. I told my daughter, don't pray for husband. Please. It's erroneous. There are things you don't ask for. You don't ask what is already available. All you need to train yourself how to talk to a man. Eh? How to attract your partners. That's all you need to do. How to know how to correctly position yourself. You are single and married men and your married women, married family and your, fa and your friend. How will you find your own? How will you be found? You are in the wrong market. You are in the wrong market. There are certain, is the end time church is a glorious church. It's a glorious church. It's a glorious church. So I was single. You don't need to be praying, oh Lord, give me a husband. And, and you don't know how to cook pilau. When you boil egg, the egg will burn. <laughs> you don't know how to make even your own bed alone. Now, how will God make you an answer prayer to his beloved son? Because he said in his word, who among you that is a father, that the child will ask him for an egg, and he will give him what? A scorpion. In the school of marriage, you are a scorpion. So you cannot be answer prayer. Are we together? Just go and prepare yourself. Read the book of Esther. You see that Esther was not praying special prayer. He was told to shower and anoint himself. And know how to seduce the man. That's what he was told. And Boaz could not sleep until he told the thing that was in his heart. How can a man be coming to your house every evening and he's not saying anything and you allow him? No. And if your season have reached, any man that come two, three times and he's not talking, clear him out of your way because he's wasting your market. <laughs> because other people are zooming, he's doing serious business. Praise God. The end time church is a glorious church. Glorious church. Glo you are called to glory, not to shame. In Peter he said, this is a chosen generation, a peculiar people, called forth out of darkness into his marvelous light to show forth his praise. Isaiah chapter, I think Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21, he said, these people have I formed for myself. You were created with specification. These people have I formed for myself to show forth my glory. Tell your, tell your neighbor that it is your time for glorification. How is he talking to you, by the way? Tell him it is your time for glorification. Oh, yes. These are not the day pastor dress anyhow. No. This, I keep on telling my friend, these are not the day you lobby around government house. Doing what? When I went to government house, it was Moy who invited me. No, pastors don't run around politicians. No, they come to our church in Mombasa. Even there's a president aspirant that 
hire a bishop and tell the bishop to talk to me. He's coming to our church. And I say, it's welcome. And then the, 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 pastor, the bishop told me, I said, well, uh, these people, they are coming, but you will need to adjust your program from 9 o'clock uh, to 10 o'clock. I say, you know, man of God, that will not happen. How can I adjust my church service for a politician? For what? That means you don't know God. I said, no, I say, no, you pastor, please think about it. You know, these people give a lot of money. Foolish talk. Who can save for God? Who can finance him? You know why many people offering are not bearing fruit? They say, we donate. You donate to someone who doesn't have. Your language corrupts your offering. Please, anytime you are giving offering here, give it with humility. Otherwise, the offering will not die. And if it can't die, it can be multiplied. And they thought I was joking. And they said, I must give him time to speak. I said, not in our church. The Bible says we should honor those who are in authority. We will respect you. We we'll put in a good chair. If you are a leader, a governor, we tell you to greet your citizen. But I have ODM. I have a, a UDA. I have wiper. Don't come and confuse them for me. We have been together in peace. Don't come and peace us. Your government is for five years. The one we have here, there is no end to his government. So we must give it better approach. The end church is not a begging church. It's not a begging church. I'm telling you, it's not a begging church. That's why God said, I will supply all your needs. Not according to the government in place but according to his glory in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, God is able to take care of me. You know, the way you are even saying it, I feel like slapping you. Can you say it very well? God is able to take care of me. One more time. You have just gotten 40%. Can you move up a bit? God is able to take care of me. The end time church is not a smelling church. It's a church that commands an aura of respect. Aura of respect. Please stop dressing and nobody ask you, where are you going? I tell our church member, when you dress going to office, people should ask you, who are not your neighbor, are you traveling? And the answer is yes. Where? To my future. I'm traveling to my future. I'm traveling to my future. I just stop wearing t-shirt to church. T-shirt is meant to be worn in your compound. No. No, I'm telling you the truth. Stop wearing t-shirt in church and they wrote in the front, I don't care. Come to church with spaghetti? What's wrong with you? The end time church is a glorious church. It's a church to be respected. In Nigeria some years back, uh, the, the government ordered the demolition of a particular church. And when they came on Sunday to embarrass them, when the soldier entered, he found in the front about four generals. Demolish on top of your <laughs> master. And then the ADC went out and had the word. What are you people doing here? They said, no, we have been sent to go back to battle. The end time church is a church of affluence. It's not a church to beg. We give food for people less privileged on Sunday. And I tell them, look, we are not giving you food because you are poor. We are giving you food so that you soon join us to give to others. Don't keep on calling me you don't have food. It was something that is meant to be temporary. That is the end time church. And that is you and I. That is you. Stop entering an office and nobody give attention to you. The Bible says you are the light of the world. A city that is set on high that cannot be hid. 
Stop, man. Stop going to a place like a hunter. And they'll tell you, hey, hey, stay outside, stay outside. No, no. That is not the end time church. Do you know those who were killing Jesus, as they were killing him, they were very mindful. They were not handling him anyhow because the coat he was wearing were told is seamless. The end time church is a glorious church. Stop driving a car police can arrest very fast. Because you have never washed the car. Some people have written on it, please wash me. Whether it's Vits, it must be one of the very best Vits in town. Somebody hearing me? Yeah. Everything about the end time church should reflect the glory of heaven. Amen. That's why he said, arise and shine for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is seen upon you. He said, the Gentile will come to your light and to the brightness of your light they are king. Am I talking to somebody mentality? Yes. One day in Mombasa, I was traveling to Nairobi. I was coming from Nairobi. The then Minister of uh, Internal Affairs, Internal Security, somebody Sunkuli, in Moi era, or Kibaki. You know, when they are traveling, when they, when they are going, they use arrival to depart. When you are coming in, they don't use General, they use arrival to, to exit. So he was coming with his bodyguard and I was coming down from the plane. And I just noticed he moved aside. Do you know you can intimidate people? He just moved aside and was looking at me, looking at me, looking at me, looking at me, till I left with his bodyguard. And then we had a reason to be in his office. That's when we were registering Winner's Chapel. And we needed to pass through state security. So we were to see him. So the day I entered his office, he stood up. He said, this young man, I've seen you somewhere in Mombasa. Who are you? You know I've won the game. <laughs> Who are you? Your name? I told him my name. I said, and we are here to see you, sir. Then he went back and sat down. Interview become friendship talk. You go for an interview, an unbeliever, unbeliever is interviewing you and you are stammering. What's wrong with your brain? <laughs> Just talk and talk and talk. And they say, so what, what is the problem? Uh, have your file here. What is the problem? Okay. Well, anyway, the president says I should have a chat with you people. But I think I can refer you to meet with him now. But we give you a certificate. That was how Winner's Chapel was registered. You don't need to be born by a rich man. Who is richer than Jesus? And that is your current father. Many Christians don't know their current status. The end time church is a glorious church. Funny enough, that day I went, I met uh, this uh, father, some of the father of faith, Kitonga. So he said, Wally, how did you get here? Because we met in Satan. How did you get here? I said, sir, the thing that brought you here is what brought me. It's called grace. <laughs> the end time church is church of all. Church of all. Christ died for all. It's not a smelling church. It's not a begging church. Your landlord is harassing you. This is no, 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 no. Because you should know the size of the house you should rent. Don't need prayer to live in a house. No. I was telling somebody, how can you be living in a house you are, you are receiving 18,000 and you are living in a house of 6,000? Don't you know you will die as a slave? 6,000 for the landlord. Tax or whatever they deduct. You are left with nothing? No. I told them, go and be four in a room so that you are paying 2,000. Because only those who manage to save have key to the future. If you eat everything today, when tomorrow comes, you will die of hunger. You don't need prayer for that. The end time church is a church with the manifold wisdom of God. And the Bible says wisdom makes the face of a man to shine. The end time church is not a dirty church. I love, I love, even if I don't have anointing and I come here, I will get anointing. You, you didn't see the carpet? 
I told Mama yesterday, I said, Mama, the way you are dressed, even if I don't have anointing from whom, I got some by seeing you. People should see you and be glad. People should see you and know their problem can be solved. The end time church is a glorious church. It's a glorious church. It's a church to be envy. Let me tell you. A time is coming your church will be controlling the traffic. The traffic. The traffic of this area, when you close, when somebody wants to go out of this place, you better let a new bath finish first because they will create jam. God created the end time church for awareness. 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 Let's begin to explore some scripture so that you can see from the Bible. Now, look at Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. We read Isaiah chapter 2. I will also read Micah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. And from verse 1. Give me King James. I'm an old school. Now, give me King James. God bless you. He said the word that the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass. In what time? Is there X after the days? So we are already there. In the last day, that the mountain of what? Of the lost house shall be established on top of what? Take note of the mountain. The first one is without plural. The second one is with plural. The mountain, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be exalted above the mountains. Above the challenges of life. Amen. Oh, sickness caught up with you. You will be above it. Amen. Can I hear your louder amen? amen? Can I hear your louder amen? amen. Can I hear somebody amen? amen? Above the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hill. And all nations shall flow into it. Go to the next verse. And it shall come and then. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go to the mountain, one mountain, to the mountain of the Lord. To do what? To the house of God of Jacob. In case you are wondering, what is he talking about? And what next? And he will teach us his way. And we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go for the law and the word of the law from Jerusalem. Let's go to Micah. You will see the same prophecy was revealed or was repeated almost verbatim. Are you in Micah chapter 4? Micah chapter 4. Thank you. Micah chapter 4. But in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above all the hills and the people shall flow into it. Go ahead. And many shall come. It is, how, you know, we, are, we are currently teaching on evangelism in our church and I said this time you don't need to go around distributing flyers. Because now nobody trusts another one. You can give somebody a flyer, he will think you have sprinkled something on it. So, evangelism has changed. There's a paradigm shift. You just look at me, then you come and say, I want to follow you. God knew that evangelism will not be possible at this time by going from house to house. They will stop you at the gate. Nobody In our day, when you say we, are, we carry a track, people welcome you to their sitting room. In this day, nobody will welcome you to a sitting room. You'll be stopped at the gate. Uh -huh. <laughs> at a distance. So, evangelism of this season is the glory of God that you radiate. I hope you are hearing me. I hope you are hearing me. I hope you are hearing me. I stopped at the filling station to buy fuel and a young boy came and said, Sir, I just love you. Every time you stop here, I'm just happy. I'm just happy. Pastor, I, I, I want to be like you. I say, well, it's very simple. Just let's receive Christ now. Because this is the man behind all that you are seeing. And there are, there. We, we don't need to carry tracks. 
by the time your colleagues see that you are on the same salary package and your life is shiny, he will ask you. You know that's why I love sheep. You see those sheep, you know they're always online. When they meet, the other one will look at the other one. If he's fatter, when they finish their meeting, he follow that fat one home. <laughs> you understand? He follow that fat one home. That's why some people are ever looking for their sheep. Because the sheep know he has not been fed for three days, and he could see another sheep that is robust, fine. The, 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 the skin can produce a good wool. He follow. Somebody hearing me? Are we sit together? So the end time church is not a stupid church. It's a church with influence. A church with influence. Hallelujah. And what a joy we are seeing in the Bible. Come on. Say, tell your neighbor, I hope you are hearing the pastor. Your colleague should call you aside, separate in the office. And book appointment. You don't need to be a pastor. You don't need to be a pastor. Your ordination is just a recognition of the church. Your breakthrough is the true identity of you with God. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Is somebody hearing that? So the church of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, will be swimming in testimony of breakthrough. That's what the church is meant for. Testimony of breakthrough. One of you, one of you will take a whole church project and you finish it. One of you. All this they say we are giving on next week and you are absent. That's madness of highest order. Because your full potential is that you can tell the pastor, what is it? What are we raising offering for? I will take care of it tomorrow. Amen. Please, pastor, just let the secretary talk to me. Amen. That's the end time church. That's what? Amen. The man that recently passed away and redeemed, I'm sure your pastor may have read, Igwe Habert, he had a plane crash in America. The church were looking for 600 million. Him alone gave 500 million. He pay all the choir, like this choir, they are on his salary. And now you are buying granite, you can't share. You, ca you can't. Like, I, don't know whether, I don't know whether you have seen yourself in the light of the scripture. The choir of the church, they are on his salary. He paid them. And he has begun, it has also been, I preach like this, I see some of you believing what I'm saying. Our church in Malindi currently is being built by one man. Not in not only in Nigeria. One man. Because all of us here, eh, most of us have houses. So why do we come together to bring church struggling? All right. So they want to build toilet. Uh, how much will you give? A hundred, a thousand. And in your house, there are four toilets. And then we come together, we can build four toilets. What kind of madness? It's lack of understanding of who we are. Yes, I'm sure many people here own a house. And then we say we want to build a small place. They will be calling for offering. Jesus has arrived. If you don't bring, if you don't bring the offering. No, I've left those rent. When I want to do things, I just say in church. Uh, how many of you will be willing to join me? Uh, how many of you there? And if nobody raises up his hand, I don't bother myself. Because the end time church is not a begging church. It's not. So brace up. Tell your neighbor, brace up. Brace up. One of the brothers just went to Malindi for evangelism. And then he saw the building. He said, I want to build that church. I said, go ahead and build it. Because that's the prophecy of the end time church. I see you rising. I see you rising. A time is coming you come to church with your checkbook. Yes, this checkbook you are keeping at home for fear. <laughs> for fear. I don't know what they will call for. I don't want to be tempted. A time is coming you will be the one looking for the temptation. Yes, sir. So, sir, sir, what, are, what, what is the next project of the church? Yes, is somebody hearing me that? Yes. Is somebody hearing me on that? Yes. That is the end time church. If something alone could leave the gate. 
there should be brethren who can do something at all. In Old Testament, Samson lifted the gate of a city. You could be the only one providing water here. You don't need pastor to tell you. You have eyes. You can see. The other day you were thirsty. So there are other who are also thirsty. Take it up as a ministry. And put dispenser there. Three dispenser. And call three brethren. Every Sunday we provide water. Not you going to office and say, the pastor office says, can I get water? They should have taken the water and pour it on your face. <laughs> Come on, somebody say, I hear. I hear. Come on, say, I hear. I hear. So, the church of Jesus Christ will be swimming in testimony. Unbelievable testimony. Because at that time, it's not you at work, but your God at work. Your God at work. Somebody say, love what I'm preaching? Yes. We'll soon realize again, like in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 20, that the God we serve is God of breakthrough. It was the, you know, breakthrough is in the Bible. It is called Balperazim. That's where God declared. Because he came through for David and broke through the barrier. You know why you are struggling to break through? I will show you why. Number one, you are not aware of the prophetic word that has gone ahead of you. You are not aware. Number two, you have not taken your responsibility in that prophecy. Because no prophecy comes to fulfillment without somebody claiming responsibility. The end time church, they say they sack you and you are crying. That's not the end time church. The end time church, when one door is closed, God opens seven. How many? Seven. 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 That's the end time church. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Amen. So the breakthrough of the church will be by error or manifestation of the manifold wisdom of God. All that I've said about the church is not going to be by our power. It is going to be by operating the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. I read two scriptures on this. Now, Look at uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9 and 10. All the things that are stopping you and are impeding your speed, they cannot stand the operation of God's wisdom. You are being stopped because it's you. Nobody can stop God. Nobody can stop God. Now let's look at it. It said, And to make all men See, what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God? There are certain things that there are certain ways, there are certain approaches of life that are hid in God that make God who God is. Now, he said, this mystery which was from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Look at the next verse. To the internet that now the principality and power in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. Another translation says the many-sided infinite wisdom of God. There are certain things that make God to be God. When that is unfolded to the church, the church will be teaching principality and power, lessons of their life. Can I hear you loud, amen? Lessons of their life. Lessons. We will become unstoppable, unmolestable, unharassable. You heard what the three blue boys said? They said, we are not careful. I believe those were in Nigeria. So in this matter, King, we are not careful. If it has to do with our God, you don't have our respect. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. Were they not deliver? They were delivered. All they needed to do is to boast their God. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Now, First Corinthians chapter two, verse six. First Corinthians chapter two. He said, "How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect." Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. 
Even the hidden. Are you hearing that again? The hidden. The hidden wisdom of God, which God ordained before creation for our what? For our glorification. Did you understand those two scriptures? There are certain approach that is hidden in God. And those approaches, when it is unfolded to a believer, and a believer becomes responsible in practicing them, look, he will end his journey in glory. He will end his journey. He becomes unstoppable, unmolestable. Some time back, uh, a man was trying to fight me in Mombasa, and he went and uh, incited some immigration officer to come to my office. And they came. We're in Kano Tower. And they carry a gun. So I was coming out from my office and I saw them. And I just passed them. I didn't know that they have given them my description. You remember Kana, my boy in U US. Kana and Daniel were around the lobby. So they saw them and were trying to find out who they come to see. And I was going to the restroom. And then one of them said, yes, he's the one. He's the one. And he was walking towards me. So I told him, why do you lack decorum? Why are you uncivilized? Say you are under arrest. I say me? If I, the way I say me, he's got his hand shake. Stop talking like you are borrowing your mouth. <laughs> Please. I, I say me? He, his hand with his gun, he went down. You arrest who? I, Wally Joseph? He said, let's go to your office. I say, I've told you, stop talking that way. It is animal that bag. Human being communicate. Can we communicate? What will you do to me? The highest thing you take me back to my Niger to my country. Stop being a woman and you are a man. Yeah. <laughs> I, the highest you can do, you can bond me and take me back to Nigeria. And it's like putting a fish inside water. It doesn't require oxygen. I will live again. I say, Anima is the one that back. Human being done back. So the, the leader hold him. I said, okay, can we go to your office? I know the Lord, they want to walk me into. They want me to walk into my office and sit behind my chair because according to your constitution, that confirm I'm walking. So when I got there, I didn't sit. That's why you have to be knowledgeable. I didn't sit. I, I just want to provoke them. And then why he was harassing me and shouting in the office and there's, there, there was a boy, a Muslim boy, who follows somebody to my office? Not a Christian. God can use anybody. Anybody. Thank you. I, I have one there. Anybody. So the Muslim boy was just sitting with his friend. The friend came to see me. And the boy put his hand in his pocket. And called the office of the prime minister. It was then Raila. And then I don't know what was communicated. So I just saw the, the broad phone to their leader. Because they were calling their phone. They were not picking. So they brought phone to him. Then he said, I just heard him say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. We are leaving now. So I told him, so that you don't make a mistake of coming here before I reverse your destiny by five years. <laughs> because I'm not, just, I'm not just a man of God that have only prayer. I can reverse destiny. For the word of God is for the rising and falling. Paul said, be blind for a season. I said, so that you don't make that mistake? What are you really looking for? He said, we just came here to see whether you have work permit. So I pulled my drawer. I said, look at it. So that you don't come here. I said, because next time, if not because I think of your mother, I will have reversed your destiny by five years. <laughs> now, if you ask me, what is the name of the person who rescued me? I don't know. Have you seen the boy again? I don't know. That is how precious you are. As the, you are surrounded. You remember in the Old Testament, the servant of the man of God was making noise. Alas, master. He said, okay, let me pray for you so that you can see. I'm here to tell you, brethren, the one that is with you is more than your problem. And you have been made more than a conqueror. I see victory for you. I see victory for you. I see victory for you. But how are we going to appropriate this end time wisdom into our life? I will touch two. Just two. Number one. Number one. 
is true kingdom stewardship. True what? I want to hear everybody. No, you are not saying it louder. Say it one more time. Disturb the eardrum of your friend. Say it louder. What does he mean by kingdom stewardship? It means serving in the church, advancing the kingdom of God. Like you see somebody at the back of camera there. He's advanced with his help. Other people outside this place can hear me. You see somebody gave me handkerchief? You see somebody walk us in? Why do you fight to be a, a chairman of a chairman? And you have never fought for, be, for not being a nosher. But in Chama, in Luo community, if they don't give you the chairman, you are the secretary of Muranga Boys Association. But in the church of Jesus Christ, you just take delight coming and sitting down. The chair is asking me to tell you he's tired of you. Kingdom stewardship. Serving God is one of the cheapest ways to become a bulldozer of life. Serving God. You are born again five years, you are doing nothing in charge. That's why your tongue is drying. You know what? The first day you received tongue, you were speaking and crying and screaming. Can't you see slowly, slowly the tongue is becoming shash, kasha, shash, kasha, shash, shash, kasha, shash. And you are not a you are not a bulldozer. Because nobody is renewing you. Nobody serves a car he doesn't use. Just sit down. Sit. You come to church and, and you have audacity and F on tree. When you get to church, you touch. Who was supposed to clean it? I shall tell you, please come and sit there. No, 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 no. I normally like to sit there. <laughs> you are not safe to sit. You are safe to serve. He said, go to that city where you are hated. You will find a call, Ty. Go and lose him. And when anybody asks you, why are you listening to that call? Tell them the master is in need of it. It's time you ask your neighbor, where are you serving? And tell him, please, I don't like lies. Where are you serving? <laughs> ask your neighbor, which department are you? Okay, tell him, if you are not in any department, it's not a sin. But after this person have left, register. My friend, my friend, you can't stand on my way. I will bulldoze you. The forces of heaven will remove you. Your generation will be forgotten. Because, listen to me, even if you are God, would you fight for me? He said the laborers are few. Why will you allow the only one walking be disturbed? <laughs> one woman was crying in a church. A lady want to take my house. A lady want to push me out of my marital home. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it is when problem arise. That they come for prayer. So I ask her, which service group are you? I said, I've been thinking. I've been thinking. I've been thinking. I said, okay, I'm not going to pray for you. Just go and start serving God. Go and join a service group. He said, what about the girl who wants to take my husband? I said, no, leave that one alone. They will soon be separated. You know why Satan take everything of yours? There is nothing of God you are protecting. There is nothing of God that is of your concern. And to God's glory, that lady died. Ooh, you know what he says? He says, touch not my anointed. Anyone who touch you, God will touch them. Go and serve God. How do I serve God? Serve God with your talent. The choir were here just now. I can't sing. I saw your bishop was singing very well. If I sing, people will die. My voice will kill them. 
But there were people he anointed to sing. I, Bishop, by the way, do you have album? That you have, yeah, you should. That voice was, was great. Let's put our hands together for this man of many hearts. Do you know in Kenya, we have, I even thank God I saw mature people. Do you know in Kenya, we have left our choir to small, small girls? And the adult can sing. When were you born that you think you are older than God? I, I can't understand. What do you have that you think you are too big for the house of God? David said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to sit in the tent of wickedness. David said, I was glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. Please, all these mature men, bring your maturity to kingdom service. Bring your maturity. What how do I serve? Number one, with your talent. Number two, with your influence. Number three, with your finance. Number, number, number four, with your physical energy. My brother, stand up. Even if you are the, even if you are devil incarnate, can you see this man at the gate and see want to come and cause trouble here? Yeah? <laughs> because if he lifts you, if he lifts you with one hand, he will crash you on the floor. God bless you, my brother. Is somebody hearing me? Everybody has a place to serve in the kingdom. You are good in English. Be writing messages of your pastor. Be turning into books. Don't sit idle in the house of God. You see in the farm, if you stand too long, bed can mistake you for a tree. <laughs> and it will perch on you. Because you look like a tree. Make sure you are serving. You are a leader, an elderly person. You can serve by making sure you are committed to the church. You become an epistle for the younger one. Am I talking? Am I talking? So you can serve with your talent. You can serve with your resources. Mary brought her alabaster oil. Joseph Aramataya paid for the grave. Serve with affluence. Your, there are places your pastor is not supposed to be seen. I gave you a testimony. There are places my anointing cannot enter. Do you know why we have elephant and we have rat and we have termite and we have spider? They can enter different places. I wanted to get a, a document for our ministry. My side, the moment they see Reverend Bishop Wally, everybody know the big man is coming. So I sent my secretary. They gave it to her without knowing. Everybody in the house of God is useful. Everybody. You are beautiful. Stop catwalking outside there. Come and catwalk here. Form, I, I went to preach in Abuja and I saw beautiful lady they can have never seen. In that church, they just select themselves and put something on their hand and then they stand by the door and welcoming people, dancing, dancing, dancing. At the door, dancing. And it was colorful. When I got there, I danced with them. You can't afford to sit here, I do. Because you are idle, that's why you peddle rumors. Because there is no vacuum. You are either serving God or you are serving the devil. Number two. Time is gone, but let me just mention it to you. And that is your relationship with your man of God. I promised yesterday. Let me tell you. Don't mind some of the teaching you hear online. No? Stop listening to preachers who have never bled. That's why they put one microphone in one corner of their house and they talk all manner of nonsense. You and your set man of God, your destiny have been knitted to God together. Let me tell you, he's your recovery CD. You know when a computer crash, in those days you put a recovery. Now they download the man of God is in your midst. It's like your recovery CD. God is too wise to put all of you inside you. God is what? Too wise to put all of you inside you. The day you get lost, who will find you? That's why I say I found Joseph with my, I found David with my holy anointed. Have I anointed him? The man of God in the house was called by God. 
and it was packaged with you in mind. Was what? Quickly post for me, Acts chapter 3 and verse 22. He was packaged, he was wired for you. He was wired for you. You may be older than him. Nobody spend age. You may be more learned than him. You may be more influential than him. But as far as your destiny is concerned, he's the compatible human being that can mend your destiny. Look at what he says. For Moses truly said unto the father, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise. I'm reading that. Up unto, unto somebody else. Unto you. Huh? Unto you. Of your brethren. Not of an angel. Like unto me. The way I led the children of Israel out of Egypt. That's how God will be raising them. Unto you. Among your brethren. Like unto me. Him shall ye hear. In how many things? I'm not hearing you all. It means that you have been hiding things from your bishop. I know what? In all what? In all what? In all what? You start dating. You won't tell the bishop. You know, bishop is the only one who can tell you the truth. Because he has no feeling for that girl. <laughs> yes, no. I tell our church member, you better tell me I have no feeling. <laughs> you are fear. I will just sell you raw. Yeah. One lady came and told me and said, Sir, I found one of the brethren. And he mentioned the person. I said, No, it can't be your husband. He says, Sir, we have been on it long. I said, There's no amount you have invested in doing the wrong thing. When you know the right thing, <laughs> call it off. But he will not listen. He went ahead. He died in Portrice Hospital. What killer? He was pregnant. No wedding, he was already pregnant. So there was no grace to protect that pregnancy. Stop being lawless in church. You obey constitution, you don't obey Bible. What kind of being are we? Your man of God. Hold the key. The master key of your life. He's one of you. But him shall you hear. In how many things? I, I'm not hearing your voice. I'm not hearing your voice. You get five million, you won't tell him. Because number one, you are not ready to pay the tithe. Number two, you are not ready to give prophet offering. I, I thought they gave me a car. Yes, I spoke to Bishop Abiyo. So somebody has given me a car. If you tell me to return, I will return. One sentence in church, you and your man of God go in disarray. That is not correct. People will say they preach them. If I don't preach you, who will I preach? <laughs> praise God. Amen. I said praise God. Amen. Your man of God, you must listen to him. God said in his own words, 2 Chronicles 20, he said, believe the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe also your prophet, and you shall prosper. Your prosperity, your welfare, is tied to what this man said. It's, I have a girl now who is traveling in from, from Rwanda, uh, is traveling in from Rwanda today. They have sat on her inheritance for long, and it's about 150 million Kenyan shillings. Two weeks ago, one week, one and a half week ago, he came to my office. I said, now bring your head. I anointed. I said, go and collect your inheritance. He was telling me yesterday, they fully cooperated and paid her. You didn't see in the Old Testament, they asked that woman, can we say something to you for the king? Don't go any contract without calling him. He doesn't need you, but you need him. Yeah. I know I won't hear you, amen? Yeah. He, you need him. You need him. You need him. So as you live here today, I see you keeping these two key. It's a wisdom of God. Serve God. Amen. You know what he said? He said, if any man serve me where I am, there he will be. God is not in sickness. You will never be sick. God is not stranded. You will never be stranded. God is not poor. You will never be poor. Can I hear your louder amen? amen. Can I hear your resounding amen? amen? So as you live here, these two key, I leave it to you. Get a form and join a service group. Don't say you don't have time. Nobody have time. Don't wait till time have you. Join a service group. There is, if, you, if you don't have the service group, create it. I, I had a woman in our church. 
we are slashing the compound and building winner. He came one day, he a director in a company. The second day, he couldn't carry her hand. You know, he has not slashed for long. So he said, Papa, you know me, I've not slashed for long. So I've taught in the night to start my own service group. I said, what is it? He said, I'll be bringing cold water and oranges for those who are slashing. So when we are slashing, it will bring orange and water for you. Stop being I do in your father's house. Let me conclude by saying, your address in this house of God is your kingdom service. Go and find out from Zachariah. He broke through barrenness by serving on the altar. When angels come, they know where they have talked to you about. The need you are supposed to be meeting in this church. That is where they will go. And if they don't find you back, they go back with your blessing. When he came, he found Zachariah on the altar, burning incense. And the Bible said that was his Lord. Let me pray for you now. Heavenly Father, thank you for this. Please rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. Lift up your two hands and just appreciate God. Appreciate him. Glorify him. Exalt him. I'm not hearing your voice. Tell him, Lord, I appreciate you for the word that I've had today. I glorify you. I exalt you. I bless your holy name. Thank you, faithful father. Today, I have a change of mind. Repeat after me, I have a change of mind. I will look for where to meet needs. I will look for where to serve. I will no longer be a Sunday, Sunday tablet. I will be a body bearer in the body, in the body of Christ. Today, in the name of Jesus, I reconnect my life and my destiny to my God sent man. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace today to believe your servant and to believe his ministry. Thank you, faithful Father. Before I pray for you, if you are here, you are not born again. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. You have never confessed Christ, but you go to church. But let me tell you, until you do it the ways of God, you will never feel what he promised. If you are here, you are not born again, I would like to pray with you so that you can receive Jesus into your life. I did my own almost 30 years ago and I've never regretted. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and life. There is no other way where you can come to the Father except through salvation. If you are here and you want to say, Pastor, pray for me, I'm ready to pray. Just lift up your hand from where you are and then I will know you are there and then I will pray with you. You want to receive Jesus this morning? Let me see your hand above your head. Let me see your hand above your head. You want me to pray for you? You want me to pray for you? Don't look for me after. Just now and I pray for you. But for the sake of those who might be online, you are there, you are not born again. I would like to pray with you right now. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I am a sinner, but today I come unto you. Forgive me my sins and my trespasses. I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life. I believe in my heart that you are the son of God and that you die and rose from the grave for the atonement of my sin. I receive and subscribe to the perfect work of Calvary and today I am born again. You are now my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Wherever you are, you may have prayed this prayer with us. Join us in this church and in case we are not closer to you, please look for other Bible-believing church and, and begin to fellowship with them and let the leaders there know what you have done online. And I'm looking forward to hear your testimony. God bless you and treat you good. Be blessed of God. Now the rest of us, lift up our hand. Father, I commit these wonderful people into your hand. I renew their covenants of kingdom service. Those who have been offended for one offense, let them receive forgiveness. Let them receive forgiveness. Let them receive forgiveness. I pray that no member of this church will be I do anymore. Will be there serving God. And God will be there fighting your battle. Every battle over your life, God will fight it and give you the crown. Thank you, faithful Father. I pray for this house. I pray for this ministry. Lord, my heart cry for this ministry. I have told you over and over that this land shall be delivered. This land shall be delivered. This part of the town of Nairobi 
shall be delivered into this ministry. The next time I will be here, it shall be from glory to glory. It shall be a dawn of a new day. There shall be testimony of healing. Barriers shall be broken. Everyone begin to find his path according to his destiny. Thank you for your servant and all other leaders. May the grace of God be upon them. Publish them. Manifest in their life. Lift them beyond their widest imagination. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's put our hands together as we welcome Bishop. Let's welcome Mama. God bless you. Are you blessed already? But do you have space for more? Well, you can take your seats very briefly as we have the children come over. Help me bring the children over. We just want to pray for them. Or oh, they are all, they're already all over. Okay. The children who are around can come over. The ones that are outside. Da, 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 da. Praise the Lord. So let's raise our hands and help me speak a blessing over the children right now. They are, uh, they are breaking, a good number of them are breaking for the Easter holidays very soon. If they haven't, I want you to pray for the children. Speak the blessing of God over them, the covering of God, the protection of God, provision for everything that they need, the covering of God over them, that they will not be sick in that season. They will not uh, be attacked by the enemy in any way in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for the children. Everybody open your mouth and bless the Lord for the children. Speak a good word. Speak a blessing over the young ones. We thank you for these little ones and for every child that is represented here. We pray for every child that has come to this altar, my God. We speak your blessing over them. We cover them by the blood of Jesus. We put the mark and the seal of God over them that the protection of God will be over them. They will not be victims of any kind of accident. They will not be victims of any kind of sickness and disease. We cover them and protect them. The enemy will not find them in any way. We protect them, my God, by the blood of Jesus. We cover them in the name of Jesus. This morning, this afternoon, we thank you for their lives. As they go to their classes, we pray, oh God, that they will learn from you. At a young age, they will know you in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you for their lives. And even over these holidays, I pray you'll make provision for everything that they need. Let the blessing of God rest upon these children. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Children, I want you to shout a loud amen as we pray, okay? Because this prayer is for you. So in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Louder. In Jesus' name we have prayed and believed. Amen. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for the children. You can go ahead to your classes right now and the Lord will bless you. Hallelujah. Clap your hands better for the children. As we have our bishop come over, praise the Lord. Can you put your hands together for your pastor? You guys are sounding tired. Let's appreciate the children. Let's try that again. Let's appreciate the children. rise on your feet. Please rise on your feet. See, there are quite a, uh, a number of you because you work in offices and then you in class. When you come to church, you turn church into a classroom and a boardroom. Look at three people around you say, this is the house of God. I said three. Now take it to five and seven and ten. So this is the house of God. for me, 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. Are you still well? Are you alright? I can't hear you. Are you alright? He says, if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself. There's a very different way we conduct ourselves in here. Different from how we conduct ourselves elsewhere. He says how to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church 
of the living God. It cannot be the church of the living God and it has dead people. Yes. Hebrews chapter 12. The way you are sounding, I'll keep you here till 5 because I need to teach you how to behave. Hebrews chapter 12, um, verse 22. But you have come to what? Let me have a few believers talking to me. You have come to what? To the city of the... So how two portions of scripture is talking about a living God. There must be life in the house. There must be life in the house. Look at somebody tell them I have come to the house of the living God. If they don't look like they have life and if they don't look like they want to have life. Please change neighbors right now. Change neighbors very quickly. We have come to Mount Zion to the city of the living God to the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company. There are no demons here now. Innumerable company of angels. Verse 23, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are, I don't know whether he's talking about you, but I know he's talking about me, who are registered in heaven. To God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect so we have come into a place of life to jesus the mediator verse 24 to jesus the mediator of the new covenant and we have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of abel glory be to god i pray for you you pray We want people to see the lyrics. Glory be to God. Don't put red every time you hear love. We are spiritual. We are not governed by the world. Look at somebody and tell them it is you I'm talking to. I need you to survive. I need you to excel. I am committed to you. You have to make it. Glory be to God. After all of these years, you're still.
be telling God that and you don't have an attitude to it. You can't be doing that with no attitude. You need to put a bounce and a swag and you need to have a groove to what you are saying right now. Glory be to God. See, Rev. Wally said, everybody shout somewhere. We also know that you dance somewhere. So look at your neighbors say, I came in to give God the glory. If they're not talking to you at all, you find another neighbor, find another neighbor, find another neighbor. Find another neighbor right now. say do I have a witness in this house do I have a witness in this house see what we did not tell you what we didn't tell you is that last Sunday new birth became nine years here Exactly nine years ago, we came into the wilderness here. But after all of these years, <laughs> he's still good. So good. There was nothing around here. We've told the story. We've told the story. You as Minister Mark did, we were doing the prayers, right? In a tent there, we didn't even have the slab. It was the soil that we were using. We used to meet in here and there was grass growing. There were no buildings, there was nothing. 
But after all these years, He's still good. Praise be to God. I want to receive the tithe and the offering. Don't be in a hurry to see it. I've missed you guys for two Sundays. I thought you missed me too, so I don't care. So now next week I'm going away. No, I'm going away again. Let me go where I missed. You know what I did with Revuole? Let me teach you guys, and this, this will be our pattern. When you don't place value, whoever places value receives. He wasn't supposed to preach where he was preaching today. But when I saw how we behaved on Friday and Saturday, and a man put a demand on Friday, I said, I will send him to you. That's why before we even started, the car to pick him was here. Because there are people who are hungry for things that come to us. And I said, I will not waste a man who has come to pour himself and then the people are not hungry to come. So that's how we switched the service for him to preach early and go to Tent of Testimonies. Because whatever God needs to do must be done. So if Newbert does not want it, it goes elsewhere. He came to his own, his own did not receive him. We need to change these things. It will never be a guarantee that if a service starts on Friday, it will end on Sunday. It's the year of the Spirit, so we will move like the wind. The wind goes wheresoever it wishes. A service can begin on Friday and end on Friday. And those who have received it will have received it. So move away from this Sunday believer thing. Let me say that again. Move away from this Sunday believer thing. Because some of you didn't have a reason not to be here on Friday. You didn't have a reason not to be here on Saturday. Last week I was in Ukunda. I did a video for mom to see how those people came to church on Saturday night at 7. Saturday night at 7. Crazy. People are hungry. They took my entire time with the men Saturday morning to teach them about investment. We done Friday. We did the whole of Saturday all the way. And then Sunday, I was leaving, I was leaving Ukunda straight to the airport in Mombasa. My clothes are wet. Because they didn't even let me rest on Saturday, Sunday afternoon to catch up with the flight. There are people who don't play games with grace. There are people who don't do that at all. When there's an opportunity, they'll utilize it. I was going, my clothes came into this place wet. There was no time for clothes to dry. And had to pack them and run to the airport. And they knew very well that I needed two hours to get to Mombasa from where I was, but they still pushed the afternoon. We cannot be a people who are entitled. All right? Do you have your tithes, your offerings very quickly? I will receive that if you have your tithe and your offering. We will finish the service in good time. Hallelujah. I just needed to greet you guys. We will finish the service in good time. You have your tithe. But while we're doing that, ask your neighbor, where were you in the course of the week? These are only three days. Please ask them, where were you? Mm. Listen, let's eliminate excuses. Let's eliminate excuses. Let's eliminate laziness. Because some of us are just lazy. Let's eliminate laziness. Oh, by the time I get to Siokimao, by the time I get to connect Matatu's you never used to consider those things when you're going to the club. And there's no club that sends buses to pick people and you used to go. The devil is a liar. I was driving last night, there's this guy who was just all over the road like this. Totally drunk, he doesn't need encouragement. He's gonna get into a ditch, but he will keep on doing that. You should come here Saturday night, Friday night, Saturday night. See the young people who are around these places, drunk to the core. Nobody needs to uh, motivate them. So we need to break away from this laziness. Some of you live around here, you cannot come on a Friday. Because Friday is your day of rest. You can't, if, no matter what we do, even if Jesus came in the flesh, he won't show up. We've got to change that. Please move closer. Do you have your offerings as well? You've now gone quiet. Do you have offerings? Yes. All right. Father, we thank you for it is you that gives the power to get wealth. And so your people have brought that which you have said in word that should be brought to your house. Open up the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing for them that they will have no room for. Rebuke the devourer for their sake. Let their young ones not be cast out before time. 
in the name of Jesus Christ I prayed. Amen. You are blessed. 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 Did you hear that you should not come here with a t-shirt written I don't care? If you're going to buy a t-shirt, if you're going to put on a t-shirt, please put on Kinako and bring it here. It's time for us to give our offerings. I don't like how this house is behaving with me. It's time for us to give offerings. I said it's time for us to give offerings. Now offering, you've been told, is not a donation and it is not a contribution. I don't know why two preachers have come here and talked about toilet projects. Reverend Philip Chinagorom was here one time, said several people will come to do toilet and they will build it for two years. He had not even gone there. Rev. Wally comes. I don't know why they are talking about those things. Um, but you will be doing projects by yourself. Amen. You'll be strong enough. Amen. Do you have your offering? Yes. I hope you came in with a good offering. Don't be leaving money at home. Don't be leaving money at home. And even if you have, just go into your, you see, you fooliza for nonsense. So you can now fooliza for God. You borrow that money and send in a good offering. He will see your sacrifice. There's a young lady, she's teaching the Sunday school. She told me that the day I said, even if you don't have an offering, come here as an offering. She said she followed that instruction. And from that time, she has never lacked an offering. Amen. She brought herself by prophetic instruction. Acts chapter 3 verse 22. Um, Rev. Wallace started reading. He didn't finish. So let me. For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. Look at verse 23. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. One of the ways to, as the Philip taught about rebellion, one of the ways to utterly get destroyed is to not take heed to what is being spoken. It doesn't matter what is being spoken, but God is looking at your heart. In fact, sometimes he uses our instructions to test your heart. So he will make us say something that is absolutely crazy to test your heart. Praise be to God. So do you have your offering? And it's, it better be a good offering. Father, we thank you that you have given to us that which we bring now into the house. And we ask that you will receive it. Let it be a sweet smelling server to you. Pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus mighty name. You may be seated so that the ashes may attend to you.
give honor and glory to your name unto you the king eternal yes. the king immortal yes. the king invisible yes. be honor and glory forever Amen. you are the only wise God yes. thank you for everything you have said to us done for us Amen. for everything you have given to us and everything you have held back from us receive praise and adoration today be magnified in this place glorify your son Jesus amplify your voice magnify your word and while at it God I pray terrify the devil in this place in Jesus mighty name and God's people shouted praise be to God I want to share with you very briefly. Thank you very much. These guys are looking good, right? We were taught on the first day that when you see somebody doing something good, acknowledge it. Your problem is you don't show up the other days. I say they're looking good. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Book of Acts chapter 12. Please don't go home without a group photo. You need to have some good photos. Praise God. Mm. The book of Acts chapter 12. Is everybody all right? Okay, how am I even beginning to teach before I present to you this offering? Uh, I wasn't aware that this book was presented here last week because we did a few copies and then it came while I was in Kisumu, then we went to uh, Diani and it came there. How many of you have seen this book, Redesigning Your Business? You have seen it somewhere. Okay, the majority have not. Uh, most of you who have raised their hands probably have just seen it online. How many have this book? You have it. Barbara, you bought it. You're a good girl. How many have Catherine, you know when you do this, I don't see. How many have this book? How many of you are business owners, business managers, business leaders, you're in management, you're in leadership anywhere, or you are running your own enterprise? Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. All right. You need this book. You need this book. And uh, it's only going for a thousand. So before I teach, if you have your thousand, come. And you receive your copy. Now even those of you who are not running any of those things, you may be a student, you will need this book. I'm telling you. Your money must be in your hand. Because I've realized that whenever I bring books here, <laughs> the people are robbing me tight, they're robbing me books. They're robbing me everything. T-shirts, they go with them. No, we have changed. We have changed. So we must see that you have... Novina, you are taking how many books? You're taking 10. Please count them. I like people like Novina. You see, the other day I told her, I said, I know you can market things. So thank you very much. The way you are doing this is how the Lord will do your own. How many are those? The still bring it. Movina wants ten. Start with, start with where the weight is sitting. <laughs> ah, you should see how she pro how she promotes her shoes. So I said, if this girl can market shoes like this, she can market books. Please give, uh, memorize a book. All right, thank you very much. Huh. I was waiting for you. I was just waiting for you to say you're going with one. Simon, are you sure that is a thousand? <laughs> so you will make us count hundred, 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 hundred. See, even Ernest does not like this kind of money. <laughs> Don't do to people these kind of things here. Praise be to God. Come and get a copy of this book. Just as, do you have this book? Then you're seated. First as, do you have yours? No, you can't share books. <laughs> what is that? So 
so when your wife has traveled with a book, what will you do? No, come and buy books here. You see, I've got to teach you how to be faithful ministers. How many of you picked Mr. Mark? I know your works. I know your Don't say, so, so when you want to read, she wants to read. That's like buying one TV when you have children. All right. We will be done. We will be done with that. Are those the only copies left? Okay. It took two years to write this book to give you at a thousand. Literally, two years. Edith has worked with Mother's Journey with. It took two years to write this book. So, Jesus said, if you don't consider me, consider my father who do with the works. The only three copies here left. One is yours. Okay. Then where is the one for your wife? <laughs> so there's only one book left. Praise be to God. <laughs> Does Deacon George have a book? You have. Mary, you want to pick one? Okay. So we are out of copies. Or we still have some. They are done. There are some in the car. In the boot. There are about five. So whoever will need that. No man, I've not seen you raising your hand over these books. How many? <laughs> See, Rev. Wallace said, you people, even when you buy ground nuts, you can't share. <laughs> See, that book doesn't have scriptures so that we have a wider reach. So you can actually go and be a blessing to your boss. You can give it to your boss. You can give it to somebody else. You say, I thought of getting a gift for you. Uh, it will be a blessing. The book of Acts chapter 12. After this, I will take an offering for Revoli. You've got to remind me, right? We will all give. And we will give well. Praise be to God. The book of Acts chapter 12. Verse 20. Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. But they came to him with one accord. And having made blasters the king's personal aid their friend. They asked for peace. Because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting the voice of a god and not of a man. You know, they were hungry people. They were hungry. They used to be fed by Herod. And at some point, he had cut supply. So when they reinstituted the relationship, they came in from a place of psychophancy. Need has a way of taking away your self-esteem. A needy man has no pride. That's why you must work hard in life at least for the sake of your pride. Your yes cannot be yes and your no cannot be no when you're in need. There's a way that poverty robs you of options and need and desperation robs you of options. You can't say what you want. You cannot express your thoughts. So because they had been cut off for a while and they made peace, they were going to starve, so they made peace. And so everything that Herod said, they said, this is the voice of a God. This is not a voice of a man. And Herod rode on that. He rode on that. So in verse 23, then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him. The angel of the Lord struck Herod for what the people were saying. It's the people who say that that was the voice of God. It wasn't Herod who said that. But the angel of God struck him immediately, and this is the reason, because he did not give glory to God. 
and he was eaten by worms and died. So I want to share with you for about 20 minutes protecting your breakthrough. Protecting your breakthrough. Shai eres tabush. Ooh. One of the worst things, and it's while we were here after Pastor Philip had taught in the morning, and while I was just teaching about the tithe and the importance of us giving testimonies, I say that one of the things that God will not excuse is when his glory is either taken away from him or given to another. There is something about God and glory that he said he would not share it. In Isaiah 42 verse 8, he said he would not share it. He has shared his power with us. When he gave us the Holy Spirit, the scripture says, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you in Acts 1.8. So he has never had an issue sharing with us his power. He has given us his gifts. He has brought us into the inheritance of his son. So we share in the identity of Christ because now we have become sons of God. He has given us the spirit of his son by which we cry Abba Father, which means that he has not even had an issue in sharing himself with us. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, he says, according as, in verse 3, he says, according as his divine power has made available to us all things pertaining to life and godliness. And then he says in verse 4, so that we may be partakers of the divine nature. He has no problem in us being part of the divine nature. He shares with us so much. He even has no problem calling us gods. In Psalm 82 from verse 5 to verse 7, the scripture says, They do not know, neither do they understand. Therefore the foundations are out of course, and everybody is walking in darkness. I have said you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. And it says, but you die like me, amen, and you fall like the princess. Why? Because we did not understand that he said we are gods. He has no problem with us being called gods. That is not blasphemy to him. Because once we become sons of God, we become gods. In a, uh, sorry, John chapter 10 and verse 30, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And the people got upset and they wanted to stone him. He said, for which of the good works that I have done do you want to stone me? They said, for the good works that you have done, we do not want to stone you. But for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself God. That was not the blasphemy. That was not the blasphemy. We were created in the likeness and the image of God. And Jesus taught us in John 3, 6 that whatever is born of spirit is what? And whatever is born of flesh is flesh. So if we have been born of God, then we must be God. In Exodus chapter 7 and in verse 1, he says to Moses, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. So God has no problem with us becoming God's. He has made us gods. That is not blasphemy at all. When somebody comes to the recognition, realization that he is a god, he has not blasphemed at all. He has not blasphemed at all. You do not blaspheme by discovering your identity. There must be the DNA of your father flowing in you and through you. So all of us that are born of God are gods. I need to get that into your spirit. Amen. That is not blasphemy for him. He has called us that. Romans 8 and verse 29, he says, For those that he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. We were called to conform. Called to conform to the image of his son, which means to be like his son. He wanted us to be exactly like Jesus. So if Jesus is his son and Jesus is God, then why would he have a problem with us being sons and us being gods? Moses, by the time he was being called a god in Exodus chapter 7, he had not even established the first covenant. The first covenant that is old and that was weak was not even established. This was pre-covenant. And he was already being called a God. We are in the mediation. The scripture talks about Jesus as the mediator of the New Testament. We are in the mediated covenant. The first one was given. The second one was mediated. 
which means it was negotiated. Moses never negotiated with God for the first covenant, but Jesus literally, the way guys would go into politics and mediate, Jesus literally negotiated a better covenant based on better promises. If before the first covenant, a man would be called God, how much more when we are in Christ? Can I hear somebody talking to me in this place? Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. How much more when we are in Christ? The scripture, in fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, we normally quote it, if any man be in Christ, is a what? I cannot hear you. I can't hear you. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The scripture never said he's a new person. You can become a new person by behavioral change. But you become a new creation by the change of nature. You have become absolutely something completely different. So we are not men. I'm trying. I'm going to keep trying. We are not men. I'm going to try that again. And if your neighbor is keeping quiet on me, change that neighbor. We are not men. We are not men. We are not men. I'm telling you. We are not men. We are in the flesh. But we are not men. 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 5, verse 3. Is it? No, not chapter 5. Chapter 10. For though we walk... Talk to me, people. For though we walk... In the flesh, we do not walk... What does that mean? We're in the flesh, but we don't live in or from the flesh. Our life is absolutely spiritual. We are in the body for the purposes of being relevant in the earth. Without the body, we can't be here. So the only reason we need the body is because we are here. But we are not the body. We are not the body. Are you people with me here today? Glory be to God. Even though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Because the weapons of our warfare, the verse 4, are not carnal. Why is it that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal? Because the battles we are fighting are in the spirit. That means that you exist in the spirit because there's no way you'd fight in the spirit when you're absent in the spirit. If you are the flesh, the devil would attack you naturally. He knows your identity more than you know yourself. So he knows if he needs to bring you down, he will not fight you in the natural. He will fight you in the spirit. The problem is that you are trying to solve spiritual problems with natural forces. You're trying to work around things that you should be working around spiritually. So you're trying to use your mind, you're trying to use your intellect around them. You think if you plan better and you work around it better, then it will get better. There are things that you need to know are spiritual. Once you see that something is stubborn enough to go against and resist every natural thing that you have done around it, you've got to know it is spiritual. And when it is spiritual, then you've got to work around it spiritually. The thing about spiritual things, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to tell you this before uh, I even get into something else. The things about spiritual things, they take time to manifest in the flesh because the visible things come from invisible things. So what happens in the spirit, it may take time to happen in the flesh, but eventually that happens. Jesus saw a fig tree and he said, no man shall eat of you or of your fruits ever again. And the scripture says the disciples had it. Jesus is the same one who said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. He spoke spirit and he said, no one can eat of you and no one shall eat of you. And the disciples heard it. Why they needed to hear it is so that when it happens, there's no doubt about how that thing happened. They needed to hear it. You know, I am, uh, I am in the mixture of old school and trying to be new school. But the people I grew up listening to, they did not do motivational speaking. They spoke with authority. Authority. The people are listened to in the faith. They spoke with authority. Nowadays, we are too careful. We are too careful about things that we say or do. 
They spoke with authority. <laughs> Revival, Jews, will not come because many of us have gathered in a stadium. Revival comes when fear comes. And fear comes when God kills a few. Look at the scriptures. There has never been a revival in the Bible because people gathered at a stadium. Because they will come. There's no difference between that and a concert. You're all quiet on me. I have 10 minutes to go. Are you still here? Yeah. It has never happened. It has never happened. It is when God does something that makes people get fearful of God that they respond to him. Then they get to know this God is above everything else that we know. That's why he had to raise Pharaoh for his sake to bring him down. Because Pharaoh at that point was the supreme ruler of civilization. So he said, for this reason, Romans 9, I raised Pharaoh so that I may pull him down. God can raise a man so high to pull him down so that people will say, this is the Lord. I know you're used to the God you have been given in this generation. God has never changed. He has not changed. He still makes alive and he kills. You need to know that side of God, that he still makes alive and he kills. That's why people are very casual with the things of God nowadays. We find little children talking anyhow. In the Bible, little kids talked about Elisha's head. It was like mine and Pastor Philip. They didn't even insult the man. They just saw a man walking around and they started singing around themselves, bald head, bald head. <laughs> Elisha didn't cast those kids. He did not. But the scripture says the Lord sent the Lord. What kind of God is that? What kind of God is that? That God sent wild animals and devoured about 42 children. For saying that that man is bald head and he is. No, it's getting quiet on me over here. This is why, see, we raise a church that can't stand anything in this generation. Because we've raised you on Serilac. I tell you the truth. Revival will break out on the life of a man. <laughs> Somewhere, anywhere. Look at the histories of revivals and you will see which is dying. You will see people who held cities captive, dying. Then people see it and they fear. Should I release you, you go home. But we've lost authority. We've lost authority. Because we are seeking acceptability everywhere. Life is so spiritual. Jesus says, that tree, nobody shall eat of it. The disciples had it. After a while, it dried. Satan knows that if he can affect you in the spirit, you will become dry in the natural. So he will let you go round and round problems, but he has dried you in the spirit. You think that your prayerlessness is because you're tired. You have been dried up in the spirit. Huh. Your prayerlessness is you have been dried up in the spirit. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of you can put in all the effort you want. The scripture says, unless the Lord builds a house. <laughs> unless the Lord builds a house. So you can, you can do everything you want to do. It did not dry up the same day, Elder Benson. When they came back the next day, they said, but the tree has dried. Satan will keep you busy in the natural while he is robbing you in the spirit. So after a while, you begin to wonder why everything is going the way it's going. You don't have any spiritual backup because he dried you from there. You know he's a student of God. Literally. 
Everything that God does is what the devil does. He's one of the finest students of God. So he knows if things are created by spoken words, then he will also speak. If things can be dried up by the spoken, he will also dry it by the spoken. That's why when somebody has said you're going nowhere and you think it's just like that, they're drying you up. If you're still here, can I hear an amen? amen. <laughs> I was telling Pastor Philip and Minister Mack in the office, I said, you see, this generation thinks that the kingdom of God operates like Facebook that will ask you what is on your mind. <laughs> the kingdom has ranks, hierarchy, authority. So now you will find a kid, a 21 year old, coming to the page of somebody like the, the age of Rev Wally and arguing with him because you are equal on Facebook. Because you have data so you can access the person and you argue. He's probably older than your own father. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. You've got to pick them in the spirit. You know I speak my mind. You will lose it. You will lose your mind. You must know how to speak your mind. When it comes to elders, I'm teaching you spiritual principles. When it comes to elders, you must know how to speak your mind. You will lose your mind. I tell you, you will lose your mind. Herod was struck dead for something he didn't say. This quietness. Herod was struck dead for something he didn't say. It's the people who said that's the voice of a God. And God was waiting for him to say no. If you look at Acts chapter 14, and we don't have time to go there, when the people came in and they came to worship Paul, he tore the clothes. He says, look, I'm not taking the glory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they say, the gods have come down to us. The guy said, don't do that. They did not fear being gods. They feared being worshipped because glory belongs to God. If you will protect your breakthrough, you must never take or touch the glory. I'm done teaching you. If you will protect the breakthrough, you must never take or touch the glory. He can share anything else but not glory. He can share anything else. His wealth, his wisdom, his power. He says the things that I do, you will do. And even greater things than this shall you do. He has no problem sharing that. But he also says when you have done that, say I am just but a servant. He has no problem you doing mighty things as long as you're not taking glory. Is somebody listening to me this afternoon? So look at somebody and tell them, leave the glory alone. Hmm. How do you rob God of glory? How do you rob him of glory? Number one, by not saying that he's the one who did what he did. In the kingdom of God, silence is a weapon of theft. When you keep quiet about what God has done, how will people know that God is doing things? Psalm 44 and verse 3. For they did not gain possession of the land by what? By their own sword. Are you still here? Yes, sir. I can't hear you. Yes, sir. <laughs> you didn't arrive where you arrived at by your strength. Even though you are acting like you arrived there by your strength. You didn't. You didn't. You did not. You have been helped to get there. God has made ways. God has used people. 
And there is a certain level of pride that people have that they will never say people help them. And any God. So even that giving God glory, you have a pride in it. If Minister Mark bought me lunch where I couldn't go, why should I just say Manzani God? He used Minister Mark. So your pride is a whole issue. But you see, the way I'll treat him is the way I'll treat God. It starts with me not appreciating that people have done things for me, then it becomes difficult for me to acknowledge that God did something. When you keep quiet about what God has done, you have not given him the glory. They did not gain possession of the land by their own sword. It was not their own arm that saved them, but it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, O oh God, because you favored them. Not even because they deserved it. It was just God favoring you. You were not the best candidate. You weren't. You weren't. They could have found anybody else, but God just favored you. Sometimes you are hired for personality, not because you have skill. There are people who just see you and they like you. And that favor is just God putting his cologne on you. <laughs> it's not that you went in there and you had the best brains. Then they don't know even why they like you. Because God just put an aroma around you. So when you act like you got your way there, you are taking glory away from God. When you're serving somebody, and this is very clear whether it is in military or protocols of government or something, you can never compete for the limelight with your boss. It is an abomination. The greatest sin in the scripture is for anybody to try and take God's glory. This is why Satan had no redemption. You know that thing you were teaching in the morning about rebellion? The root of rebellion is theft of glory. The reason somebody will rebel is because they want to take what belongs to somebody else. So we go into the bush to fight to take the government. That's what a rebellion is. It is all about the theft of glory. That's why God does not forgive that one. Because its DNA is in the devil. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. <laughs> the DNA of rebellion is that one. John chapter 8 verse 44. John chapter 8 verse 44. I'm not reading it. I just want you to see it. Now, I'm not reading it. Jesus is the one talking. That's Jesus talking. He says, you are of your father. Can you imagine if a pastor said that? How people would react. <laughs> but this is Jesus talking to people listening to him. He says, you're of your father the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. So it is possible for somebody to be the son of the devil. Rebellion is in the lineage of Satan. Rebellious people, those are Satan's children, even if they sit in the house of God. Because these people were listening to Jesus, so they were in church. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. He is a, a liar and the father of it. When I don't say God did for me what he did, I am a liar. I'm a liar. When I say, you know, I just woke up, you know, and then this just opened for me, and I know very well that God moved things for me. I'm a liar. I'm not speaking the truth. 
Most of the time, you keep quiet because you want to look better than you are. Literally meaning you're a liar. And whenever you steal God's glory, he opens the door for Satan to take whatever you stole from him. This is why, even with things like tithing, you see that thing of the devourer thing, that I will rebuke the devourer. If you have something that does not belong to you, that you have stolen like that, then God will just let Satan come and pick it up. Tithe, tithe is a testimony. Tithe is not a gift. It is a testimony. It is a testimony that God has blessed the works of my hands. Amen. When you don't tithe, you are saying God has done nothing for you. That's why heavens are closed. Because you are saying God has done nothing. Everything that you have, you have gotten it by your strength. How can 200 people be sitting in a place and only 15 people are faithful tithers? How can you regularly be earning in a salary and once in a while emotionally be paying your tithe? You are not giving God glory. That's why your finances are dying. I'm telling you, yesterday, was it yesterday, I was talking with Judith on the phone, I was talking with her, I said, you know what, I have a big mouth when it comes to the things that God has done. I am quiet at a personal level, but not when God has done stuff. I have a big mouth, I mean, God will do something, several people will know. That big mouth multiplies the things he does. I asked in the morning, so let me say it because you are here, you aren't here in the morning. Why is it that when things are going wrong, you share it? When things are going right, you keep quiet? What kind of witchcraft is that? When everything is going wrong, you are an evil evangelist. When everything is going wrong, you share with people everywhere. The day a breakthrough comes, you'd be shocked at how many people will share their issues for prayer. The day the breakthrough comes, they are quiet. What is it that motivates you to talk about bad things and to hide the good things? Oh, you know, if you talk about them, you will lose it. You have already lost it. You have. Take me back to that Psalm 44. No, put it at Psalm 100. My time is up. Psalm 100 verse 3. Are you still all right? Are you breathing? See, if I don't see you tithing here, I just know you're ungrateful. You are. How did you come here? Didn't you pay to come here? So that was not money. I'm not seeing any one of you looking like you're dying tomorrow. You're looking very fine and healthy. Your hairs are done. <laughs> your hairs are done. If your salonist takes more than God takes... That head, that head, that head, that head. Mary, do you know why I left 680? Do you know why I left 680? Do you know what drove me to living 680? When I share this with pastors, it's a whole crazy thing. I said, how do we collect offerings and sacrifices and carry all of it to an Indian as if he is my high priest? Oosh. How does an Indian sitting up in an office receive everything that the children of God have been putting together in the name of rent? I said even if we are coming to the farthest bush, we will. How can your salonist be receiving from you more than God is receiving from you? I'm keeping you till three. Next week is Passover. And you're actually fine with it. <laughs> Joffrey, why did you go and sit at the back there? 
You are at work? Okay. All right. It's fine. It's fine if you're running meetings. So, this gentleman, allow me, allow me. So he came to me, he said, I want to do something at the front over there. I said, what's your budget? He gave me. I said, that's below you. I told him, that's below you. You're past that. That one should be these people who are beginning. He said, okay, let me, let me see what I can do. By the time he was done with doing the stage, he had gone how many times past? Nearly eight times what he wanted to do. Then he gained faith to go up there. By the time he was done, what he had put together here was nearly 20 times his initial budget. He told me from that time, the hospitalization of his mother ceased. <laughs> you, you have turned your doctor into your prophet. He's the one receiving your tithe, your offering, and giving you direction for life. Eat this, don't eat this. Whatever I'm saying, you don't listen. But when the doctor tells you this, you take it as the word of a prophet. Yeah. That's why he will remain your prophet. Yeah. You honor the mechanic more than you honor God. Yeah. You will never fail to service your car. You know I need the car to be well maintained and all of that and I want everything to be checked and you will leave 15,000 there. You've never given 1,500 to God free will offering. You're quiet. If you keep quiet, I'm coming to your case. So you better just make it a joyful service then we go home. You know, I, I'm telling you, the people I used to listen to, we listened to radical people. We had no money. One time, we'd, we just got married. We had no money. It was January. We'd gotten married in September. January is a bit dry that season. Then there was, a, there was a conference put up somewhere. We went in. There's this man. He was a billionaire. He was with winners then as well. And he was teaching certain stuff. Like seven days, we would walk to the conference. The only thing that we had for lunch was mom would carry water. Seven days. Seven days. Newlywed couple, four months. Seven days, morning till evening. You people get married, and so now it is you only live once. You will live once. I'm telling you the truth. You will live once. You don't even understand that that is a spiritual institution that you've got in. The, let me hold myself. But the level of disrespect people have in the initial years of marriage that makes them think that they have hit the highest in life. How do you think you were born? A man and a woman met. You're not the first one. So you get into marriage, you stop ministry, you stop service. Your generation is good, man. Seven days, Pastor Betty, the only time. One time we made chapatis that lasted for a whole week. So you're coming into a service. You cannot even buy lunch. You take water. But I heard a man say, if you buy a fridge for 50,000 and you don't give God, 50,000, you freeze your life. That's all I needed. It doesn't matter what level you're in in life. What you need is revelation. Let me look for, okay, these guys are good, man. Let me hang out with these guys. because You see, they're always in church. He said, how do you spend 70,000 on yourself? You've never given it to God. Completely changed everything around how I was doing my finances. I had listened to a man, the Archbishop Benson in the say God commanded him to bring 90% as tithe. So the man I was listening to, he was doing 30%. At my low level, I raised mine to 20. At that particular point. Things don't just happen, ladies and gentlemen. That was an acknowledgement that it is God who does things for us. Hmm. 
So today, I tell you the truth. Today, one time I was hosting a conference, and, and way back in 2009, this is not the motivation of that conference I held in Cameo, Pastor Phil. I had shifted into a better place, spent money, paid rent, and all that. I said, I must do something equivalent to God. Put up a seven-day conference that I was going to sponsor by myself. Bought people air tickets because my belief was I cannot do something for myself and not do an equivalent for God. You got to know how to protect breakthroughs. Don't be your own God because when life will happen, you cannot be your own gyra. You have absolutely no backup. Show. Show. Praise be to God. I'm done, man. Know that the Lord, he is God. Please read with me. You are reading like, okay, 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 okay. Clear your throat and everything. Can we read this thing well? Know that the Lord, he is God. Shout the other one. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. And not we ourselves. This one alone is enough to make you testify of the goodness of God. It is he who has made you. Yes. Not you yourself. I. We lose breakthroughs because we are trying to portray it that we have made ourselves. So nobody can tell that God has done this. So they are not attracted to that God. If you go to a tailor who does a good job, and somebody asks you about the dress, you'll say, let me show you the tailor. And by that, you introduce a new customer to the tailor. Why are you afraid of introducing people to your God? You introduce them to the person who does your hair. You introduce them to the person who shaves your beard. You introduce them to the person who does all the other stuff. But when it comes to the things of God, you want to look like you are all sufficient and self-sufficient. Anything God gives you that you do not give him glory about, he takes it back. Look at the ministry of Jesus. Everywhere he performed a miracle, he mentioned the Father. He was God. Everything he did, he acknowledged the Father. He gave glory to the Father. When you keep quiet about what God has done, you have taken away his glory. Number two, when you say you have done what God has done. <laughs> I hope my English is better than the one for Rev. You can understand it. Or is my English also going the way of mathematics? When you say that you have done what God has done. He said, when I bring you into the land, the whole of Deuteronomy chapter 8, where he says, when I bring you into the land which I promise and you've eaten and you're full, you shall not say that you got there by your own strength. Sometimes you listen to people's testimony and you wonder whether it is God who did it or it's the people who did it. Because 90% of that thing is them. Then they crown it with God. When you claim that you did what even you know God did, you are robbing him of the glory. Number three, when you worship the thing he gave you. <laughs> Romans chapter one, Romans chapter one and verse 20 then I'll be done there. Ah, Yadashi. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that everybody, nobody has any excuse. Verse 21. 
because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. See, the moment you don't give him glory, he will darken your heart. And your mind will become futile. You, your thoughts will go nowhere. Verse 22. Verse 22. Professing to be wise. Slap your neighbor, tell them don't become a fool. I didn't hear you talk to your neighbor. Tell them don't be a fool. Verse 23. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image. So now that Kai is a God. So now the position is a God. You have taken the glory and put it on the creature. Change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God has given them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. God has given them up. I don't want God to give me up. Listen, he didn't say God has given up on them. That's a whole different thing. He has given them up like he has sold you. You're no longer in his, you're no longer in his system. He has given you up. It's like handing over a fugitive. You can give up on somebody and still have them. When he is giving you up, he no longer has you. Don't worship the thing that he gave you and forget the one who gave it to you. So now, you know, you're too busy for God. You're too busy for service. What that means is you don't have capacity to handle more. If this small level is keeping you too busy, what will happen when he wants to give you an entire city? And God never gives you more than what you can handle. So when you say you are too busy, you have said you've reached capacity. There cannot be increase. He will never punish you with more than, it's, than you're able to bear. Huh. Are you listening to me, people of God? Protect your breakthroughs. I said protect your breakthroughs. Yeah. So take me back to that Acts chapter 12 and then we close. Acts chapter 12. Why are you taking me to verse 1? The angel struck verse 24. Is it 24? 23? The angel of the Lord struck him <laughs> because he did not I'm done. May God not be angry with you Amen. because you didn't give glory to him. Amen. You prayed for him to open a door. He opened a door. Then now you're quiet. <laughs> I told Pastor Philip in the office, you know, even the thing that sometimes you feel your tithe needs to go up, that's pride. That's pride. So, you're waiting for the day. What you're saying is, God, you've not done enough for me to bring back. So you're waiting for the day he will give you 200K. Because he gave you 2K, you're feeling that is too small. You can't bring that tithe. That's pride. That's pride. A tooth is a small thing. When it begins aching you, you will not sleep. I tell you, a tooth will keep you awake 
when it is aching you. It looks like a small thing. So there are things that you take for granted that those are little masses. There's no little mercy. Mercy is mercy. There are people who have run mad because of a toothache. Why do you think that when somebody has had a crazy accident, they have to sometimes induce a coma? Because the pain can kill them. <laughs> pain is crazy. Pain is crazy. They'll, they'll make sure they deal with that. But the pain can kill you. So these small things that you think are small things are not small things. A lady told me, she's a nurse in Kisumu, told me how a man came in, had had an accident, motorbike. The skull was open. They literally had to send this man into an induced coma. That pain is crazy, excruciating. I have a friend of mine whose husband <laughs> was in ICU for so long and none of them could even go in there because this man's brain, the skull was open, the brain was out there for a while. So you visit from outside. The time you were in hospital after giving birth to your daughter, right? <laughs> and I met this lady, we were with her in campus and she said, please come and pray for my husband. And you just come from afar, you watch from afar, and daily, alone, look at you here, I think that's a small thing. I'm not trying to scare you, I'm telling you life happens to people. Then you've got to be pushed to give God glory. We bring you into the service, we say, let's worship God, you're looking at us like this. We are the ones who talk to the people who employ you outside of church. Let's even leave spiritual things. <laughs> life alone should push you into service. Just life alone. The gratitude of life alone should push you into service. Look at three people, tell them, don't be ungrateful. I said three people, I said three people, I said three. Please rise up on your feet. Ladies and gentlemen, protect your breakthrough. Whew. Protect your breakthrough. When you don't say what God has done, you're robbing him of his glory. When you say you have done what God has done, <laughs> When you're worshipping what he gave you. When you worship that thing. You worship the job. You worship the money. You worship the opportunity. You worship the gift. Everything he does in your life. He wants to receive the glory. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 15. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all those who are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and so you don't take the glory. Everything he does is so that people may see it and give him glory. Are you people all right? Everything he does, people will see it and give him the glory. Refine us fire. One design is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart 
The secret to gratitude is to find something to be grateful about. Aya. Ayada. Alezada. Hey! You must find something to be grateful about. Hey! Anga baba baba sada bada bada. There are things you did not know you would accomplish. There are things you did not know you would acquire. But the Lord by His grace, the Lord by His grace has allowed you. Oh, give Him the glory, give Him the glory, give Him the glory.
Jesus Christ says, Redeemer. Jesus Christ says, The healer. Hey, ta. Ta. Hey, ta. Ta. Hey, ta. Ta. Hey, ta. Ta. sending praise in advance Amen. for everything he's going to do Amen. glory be to God Nina Siri Naya yes Six, seven people. Tell them I'm not crazy. Tell them in a city, in a city, in a city.
the offering for Rev Wally. God knows that we are a grateful people. We are not taking away his glory. He has brought us this far. He has kept us. He has sustained us. And we will keep making noise about his goodness. Praise be to God. You have your offering for... Let me have a few people who will just sow a proper seed. We become a blessing to the man of God. Okay. Which Emmanuel Swaka? He can be standing here next to the microphone and be giving his testimony. You want to sow a seed into the ministry of Rev. Wally Joseph. If you have it in cash, take a thousand, take two thousand, take five thousand, take ten thousand. The five hundred is what you have. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I was telling you, we were going to conference to feed on the word when there was nothing else. I was already a preacher. I was already a preacher. But life would happen and I needed the principles of God to turn around things for us. You got to learn how to sow. I remember meeting at KICC in 2005. It was being held, hosted by Bishop Alan Kuna then. They were having their sixth anniversary. And they had this man of God from Zimbabwe, Bishop to the Bismarck. I gave everything that I had in life to give. The only thing remaining was to give myself. My phone, in 2005, phones were not easy to come by. My watch, everything. As the preaching was going on, we were walking with my friend in South Africa, Pastor Eugene. We would be going there and just sowing and sowing and sowing. There is no loss in sowing. Absolutely not. Take your offering and bring it here. If you have it on phone, send it to Pastor Philip's number. Just so that we will quickly separate that. Please put Pastor Philip's number. But if you have it in cash, come and drop it here. If you have it in cash, come and drop it here. Glory be to God. Take a good seed. Take a good offering. Come and sow it here. The breakthrough decreed and declared in this ground will work for you in a mighty, mighty, mighty way. I stood at the altar in Mombasa in September. I prayed. I'd gone with Dexter there in 2000 and 2021. Got a prayer for him. I stood there, said, God, you've got to do this for my son. I was praying for glory. I was praying for my children. The same week, the same week, it's the week your contract was changed. It's around the same week that the contract was changed. These different people. Huh. Seed. Seed supersedes needs. I tell you, as you're bringing that, I hear that Emmanuel has a testimony. Okay, now hold the microphone like it is already okay. Okay, please keep coming. If you're sending, send to the phone. L listen, even if you feel like you want to send a hundred thousand, just send it. Just send it. The other day, a man listened to him and watched and then sent 50,000 to his phone, said, give me his number, and sent 50,000 to his phone. We have no problem with that because you know what you need and God knows what the man needs to release. So you put it in, it will go. Yes, uh, thank you, Bishop. Uh, I have a testimony and I'm compelled to speak it here, especially on this afternoon that we've learned about uh, how to protect breakthroughs also how not to keep quiet because silence we've been taught it is uh, being silent is like being okay let's go to the testimony <laughs> please keep bringing money over here i want to release people to go home yes i am grateful for this ground because i managed to obtain my breakthrough from this ground uh, i didn't have the luxury to go to school but uh, from this ground, I will say that uh, God made it possible for me to go back to school. And I started school in January. Praise God. I am grateful that tomorrow is my last class. All right. For this term. Right. Then on Tuesday after Easter Monday, I will be sitting for the exam. Right. For this term. And I am totally grateful for Bishop because you know my story and your prayers has always been with me 
every now and then. I'm totally grateful. Praise God. If I keep quiet, I will be a very ungrateful person. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Praise God. You know, Emmanuel is a is a, is studying theology. It's something he has loved with the whole of his heart. He's a very studious gentleman. And a lady here, when we talked about the household of faith, I'll tell you why I'm saying that. And one of the ladies here just said, I'm going to send you to school. We need to learn how to be a blessing one to another. Glory be to God. I'm saying that because um, the man of God told me, he said one time he asked his people, he said, where are any two of you or four of you that do anything together? And he didn't find them. So I told him in this house, I've been teaching about the household of faith. <laughs> it is important that you do business together. You open doors for one another. You push each other to the future. Glory be to God. Let's appreciate God for that. All right. Have we all given? We've given. The intention was to close this service today at 1.30. The owner of the service wanted you to know you have been robbing him. So what a mighty way to do this. Glory be to God. Look for somebody that you don't know. Somebody you don't know. It's in simple obedience. Uh, the team for evangelism needs to meet. Meeting with the team for evangelism, please meet uh, festers after the service. After service. Now, have you found somebody you don't know? Are you sure you don't know them? Do you now know them? Do you now know them? Do you know their names? Do you now know their names? You guys don't know how to strike conversations. You quickly just, what is your name? What is your name? My name is also, and then it is over. <laughs> don't do stuff like that. Don't do stuff like that. You get to know somebody and you speak with them. You know, talk a little bit about yourself. And I hope your neighbor did not say, my names are. Because that's where we correct grammar. Praise God, praise God again. Praise God, church, praise God. My names are. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of all Holy Spirit. We have the Wednesday service. Remember that. Wednesday service. That's our family gathering. We all are supposed to come. I know there's an online service on Tuesday, prayer service for the city center, which is a blessing. But after the online, come here on location. Kitengela City Center and Siokimau. We meet here on Wednesdays. There will still be prayers on Friday for the people who will be around. We won't have a service in the morning, but we will have prayers in the evening on Friday. And then we will have the Resurrection Sunday service here. Praise be to God. Shalom Irene. Peace and prosperity. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Nothing shall be broken in your life. The Lord bless you, keep you, watch over you, cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. As you go home, protect your breakthrough.